Now in science, we have many tools to help us not only understand certain phenomena, but also to explain certain phenomena, or sometimes just to allow us to figure out the correct or appropriate values. A lot of these times, these devices, whether they be equations or mnemonic devices that help us remember the order of things, they don't necessarily explain how or why these things occur, but they're laid out in such a way that they allow us to arrive at appropriate values or appropriate conclusions based on the theories behind them. And in equilibria, and analyzing quantitatively equilibrium systems, there is one such tool that we use that doesn't necessarily explain how or why equilibrium occur, but allow us to understand quantitatively the relationships between the reactants and products and their concentrations if we understand the equilibrium scenario that we're analyzing, and if we understand the relationship between those concentrations and the equilibrium constant. And so for equilibria, that particular device is what we refer to as an ice table. So before we even begin to construct our ice table, we need to have a balanced equilibrium equation. And once we have that, we can now set up our ice table, like this, with I, C, and E lined up down the left-hand side. We are setting up a table after all. And our initial concentrations of our reactants, we are typically going to be provided with. The initial concentration of the products are typically going to be zero. So our initial concentration setup is typically going to be fairly straightforward. The change in concentration is where the challenge comes in because we have to understand that first, this is a closed system. So the only way that products get formed, that is the only way that their concentration is going to increase, is if the reactants react. So their concentrations are going to decrease. The magnitude of this change, we insert a variable x to represent. Now, the degree or the amount of that change is also going to be dependent on the coefficient from the balanced chemical equation. So the way that we set up the C portion or row of the ice table is that we are going to include the variable x to represent the change, but the magnitude of that x is going to be dependent on the coefficient from the balanced chemical equation. In addition, we are always going to notice that the reactant concentrations are going to go down and that the product concentrations are always going to go up, at least under most scenarios. And then finally, E of the ice table, the equilibrium concentrations, are just going to be represented by the sum of I and C. So we're going to see there's going to be an initial concentration minus the change in concentration for the reactants and the initial concentration of zero plus the change in concentration for the products is how we're going to set up the E row of our ice table. Now it should be noted that since our product concentrations are zero that the E is effectively just going to be the C for the products. And now since this is an equilibrium concentration that we're looking at, we can now sub these values into our equilibrium expression. And if you're provided the value of k, you can now utilize that to figure out your concentration change, or your x value. And once you know your x value, you can then sub that into the values that are in the equilibrium concentration, or E row, of the ice table, and then ultimately figure out what your equilibrium concentrations are. Now, as you work through utilizing this ice table and ultimately solving for x, you may come across scenarios where it appears that you're going to have to use the quadratic formula or perform even more complex calculations to try and figure out a value for x. But let's try and make this a little bit easier. In scenarios where you can simplify by taking the square root of both sides, do so. It's even simpler than that because typically when we take the square root of something, it's either plus or minus, but it's never going to be minus because if that were the case, you'd have a negative x value, and if you plugged it back into the equation, you would find that you would have a negative concentration, which is not possible. We can't have less than nothing of a substance. The other scenario that we come across is if we have a really, really small k. Now remember what k represents. If we have a really, really small k, most of the reaction stays as reactants in that equilibrium. So what that tells us is the change in x actually isn't very large. In fact, in some cases, it's so small that we can negate any change in x from an initial concentration greater than zero. And there is a test that we can perform to help us out with this. And the way that we perform this test is that we take the initial concentration and we divide it by k. If that number is between 200 and 500, then it may be okay 
to eliminate an x that is changed from something or an initial concentration that's not zero. If that value is greater than 500, then you're probably safe in eliminating that x. Now again, that's only eliminating an x from an initial concentration that is not zero. Any change from zero, so in most cases for us, that's going to be the change in concentration of the products, any change from zero is significant. But ultimately what you're going to find is, in scenarios where the equilibrium constant is really, really low, that if we solve for x and sub it back in, the x value is so low itself, it's not actually going to change our initial concentrations all that much. And so that's why it's safe to eliminate or negate that x when we have extremely low k values. And again, it's only true for extremely low k values. For extremely large ones, you're out of luck. Now, the first time you try and set up an ice table, you may find it challenging. But most things, the first time we go through it, are fairly challenging. The good news is, once you figure out how to set up and analyze and interpret an ice table, it can be applied to just about any equilibrium scenario. But, if you're still stuck, and you want to see an example of somebody going through utilizing an ice table and utilizing the test to see if we can eliminate the value for x, that is, use the approximation method, uh, I did go through that, and I will put the video uh, here. So if you want to take a more in-depth look at a specific example, check it out. Otherwise, I hope this video helped you understand how to set up an ice table, a tool that we can use to help us analyze equilibrium equations, and more specifically, try and figure out the equilibrium concentrations for any particular equilibrium scenario. Thanks for watching.